Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pop Art Hunter channel. And today we're going to be discussing a book. This book, The Game Console. Now, like with a previous video that I did um, that had, uh, you know, Nintendo games and 8-bit, uh, you know, games within them. And I, you know, I was thinking maybe it was a little bit of a stretch to review that game because it isn't really art and I mean it's pop culture but you know I didn't think it really fit but this <laughs> this book uh, I was for sure was not going to be something I would review I was just going to have it on my shelf to accompany these things and then when I opened it up it really breaks down each of the consoles uh, into their pieces even <laughs> and for me the book is a work of art the way it displays and showcases all of these particular components um, but then also I think it's a work of art that they took these electronics and these wires and these little bits of solder and they're able to make them into a sleek game system that everybody has to have. So I'm 100% going to review this um, as you can probably tell because I'm not just going to end the video here. So we're going to flutter through this book, talk about some of the different consoles over time and you know how they looked, what they meant to us. Let's go ahead and get started. Game consoles are pieces of art, period. I'm just not even gonna get into, I'm not even gonna argue with you about it because it, again, any of these systems, you can probably look at a little little snippet, a little component, you're gonna be able to tell what the system is and the artwork behind it. It's technology, technology is art. If you don't wanna watch the video, don't watch it, but please watch it because you know, they'll give me some views, etc. So we're gonna go ahead and look through this, the game console. We're not gonna flip through every single page, but I am gonna show you a couple of them. And this gets into the technological components of these games. So let's start with the, <coughs> the earliest one here. Yeah, first uh, generation, the Magnavox Odyssey. I've never even heard of such a thing. <laughs> but it shows you uh, the system itself, gives you a little background on it. It even states the launch price, processor, power, RAM, uh, any accessories, how many units were sold. So it gets very deep into the technical specs uh, of uh, these consoles and so as we move forward oh yeah they they actually kind of deconstruct <clears throat> the components of these games as well um or these game consoles and so they show you the microchips etc so as you get further these are going to get far more intricate i mean look at the number of pieces um chips and little bits and bobbles for a controller um this is the balance board for the wii Versus the, one of the earlier system, the Magnavox Odyssey, it just had this one little chip and just just held on and hoped for the best. Uh, Commodore 64, you got the uh, Nintendo Famicom. Oh, that's a fun one. Look at that, look at that, look at that. It's just interesting. I mean, I, I love looking at these, the... The, the systems themselves, it's, it's funny how they choose certain colors or certain schemes or certain lines and design. I mean, uh, they, they really they really had to put a lot of thought and effort into it. And I'm sure at the time, you know, something like this was going to be much easier to produce. It, it uses one type of plastic, you know, it uses one color. Uh, um, and so I'm mean, sure things like that came into play. And then also the branding with Nintendo. I mean, these colors are, you know, became hit, hit the red button. You know, versus um, uh, on a, a Sony, it's like hit the circle button, uh, hit the back button, hit the B button on on a Xbox, and so like uh, it became kind of ingrained in the culture. Yeah, just hit the red button, hit the red button, hit the X button, hit the A button. Um, you just kind of had those things ingrained. So the color schemes and things like that, I think, um, also contributed to the design of these uh, particular systems. Um, and then when you look at like. I mean, things as simple as the memory card and the logo, uh, the controllers, the 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 feel and the and the grip and those things. Not only did that affect gameplay, but the aesthetic became a huge factor in in sales. I mean, to be able to sell this, you would kind of have phony, uh, phony. I was gonna say phone, uh, <laughs> you Sony. Uh, but you could have a phony Sony fan uh, that really is an ex a secreted Xbox fan. Um, but ch the fanboys for Sony or Xbox or fangirls, for that matter, um, you know, it was it was a lot of it was based on aesthetics and design. When you look at the the new launch of the new Xbox and the PS Five, boy, that I mean, they, they just have this back and forth between this looks terrible or this looks good, and so design becomes a huge factor. What is this? I'm. <laughs> I've never seen this before. The Game Boy Advance e-reader. So I had these little cards. It's almost like an um, amiibo 
uh, kind of thing for uh, uh, the the Switch or the Wii U, um, <clears throat> where you would actually slide the card and that would give you um, some sort of in-game something. That's kind of cool. I didn't even know those existed. <clears throat> the new one? In the year 2000? What? What? There are only four DVDs that use Nuon's enhanced capabilities. Bedazzled, Dr. Doolittle 2, Planet of the Apes, and the Adventure of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. What is this? <laughs> it was a hybrid DVD player and video game platform from VM Labs 2000. I have never... <laughs> well, there's probably a reason I ever heard of it. It had a total of eight games, only a few movies... I don't know what the movies... I don't know what the enhanced abilities of the movies were exactly. Huh. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. So this is... For me, this is a, is a research book as well. Um, you know, as I... I just like learning about all these different systems and, and you know, what was available and how we've evolved over time. Uh, and even look at the design of this one. <laughs> when you look at the... Uh, PlayStation Move, that big orb at the at the top with the kind of the LED colors that would flash. I mean, that took some that took some thought. It took some uh, it took some consideration as far as how how is this going to look? How are people going to use it? How is it going to feel? Um, you, you, I would also recommend if anybody has a PS Five to play. Uh, oh, it's 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 leaving me. The little robot. The little some robot guy lab, my name. I just played it not that many months ago. I mean, PlayStation 5 didn't come out too long ago. Um, and um, yeah, yeah, there's this robot game, Astro. Astro's Playroom. So you can play the Astro game. And um, they actually almost have something similar to this for all the Sony equipment. You actually collect um, controllers, consoles, piece of equipment, memory cards, accessories. Uh, and then when you, when you collect them, you go into this area of the game that has 3d models of all of them. And so it's kind of a cool, it's just almost like a 3d version of this book, just only for Sony. Uh, and this goes all the way up to PS4, Xbox one. I don't think we have PS5 and beyond. Nope. This was made a little bit, uh, just before that. Yeah, uh, the game consoles are cool pieces of art. Again, you, you could take a controller from the, the NES and you could mount it in a shadow box, put it on your wall, and it would be just a piece of art. It's so iconic. It's so, uh, I mean, it's inspirational for many people. What video games have accomplished over the decades. And, and this book succinctly wraps up all of that goodness. Super cool. Agree or disagree? I think that game consoles are truly pieces of artwork and for those who collect vintage consoles I think that they are priced and treated as artwork. Uh, people are looking for these old systems, they want them in pristine shape, they want the unique versions and variants of them and so it just goes to show you that there was a certain style to these consoles and the companies that created them had to really consider and think about that. And we might have taken them for granted at the time, but now with the console wars, you see the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox, the designs become just as, as important as the power behind them or the games that they'll be launching with. I mean, the controversy on both uh, the uh, uh, the new Xbox or the PlayStation 5, it was, it was kind of heated. Like, oh, that looks like a Wi-Fi router. And the other one's like, it's a cube. It has nothing to it. Like, And so it, design becomes a really important part of these things. So I, I think that um, the game consoles are really cool pieces of artwork. Game consoles and games are part of our culture. And I, I think that this is a really cool book that showcases all of them. And I'm happy to put it on my shelf. Thanks for watching the Pop Art Hunter channel. Like, subscribe, comment, and we will see you next time. <laughs>